The inclination of the Tower of Pisa is greater than 5 degrees. This means that its summit juts out over the base by roughly 4 metres. The reason is that the Leaning Tower has been gradually sinking into the ground, and over the course of centuries this has led it to subside to a depth of about 3 metres below ground level. Weighing about 14,453 tonnes, according to calculations, practically the same weight as Brooklyn Bridge, almost 60 metres tall, featuring 207 columns and more than 250 steps to climb up to the top, the Leaning Tower is one of the seven wonders of the world. It's an attraction that draws tourists from all corners of the world, an object of study for artists and scientists. And it's nothing short of an amazing architectural miracle. But how did this miracle come into existence? More than 600 years before Thomas Jefferson made his celebrated Declaration of Independence of the United States of America, when Crusaders and Saracens fought against each other, in the old world, in one of the cities considered to be among the greatest powers of the whole of the Mediterranean. In 1173, work began on the Tower of Pisa. In other words, on the bell tower of the adjacent church. The tower, designed to harmonize with the cathedral and the baptistry in a unified grouping, contributed to the creation of a complex of monuments conceived as a symbol of the power of Pisa likened to the power of ancient Rome. The delicate interplay of balancing forces resulting from the relations among these monuments led the poet Gabriele D'Annunzio in the early 20th century to define it with the evocative name of Meadow of Miracles. Before the end of the 12th century, construction had already reached the fourth ring when the tower began to lean towards the south though without falling. Building works were then suspended. The ground on which the tower rested and still rests is an immense natural water bowl covered by layers of earth in an area which is itself prone to progressive soil subsidence. Around here, this used to be the sea the sea which is now six and a half miles from the city. Just think, only a few hundred meters from the square, the remains of an ancient port have recently been uncovered, with no fewer than 20 boats. About a century after work had begun on the tower, at the time of the birth of Dante Alighieri, and with a tower that seemed really solid despite its lean, it was decided to resume the building works. This time, construction got as far as partial completion of the seventh ring. But once again, the bell tower decided to lean and it proved impossible to continue with construction. Years went by without any attempt to complete the tower. It probably wasn't until the first half of the 13th century that the actual belfry was built. Its builders endeavoured to correct the lean by as much as 45 centimetres, a straightening that can clearly be seen with the naked eye. Finally, the cathedral bells could ring out over the whole city. Since the laying of the first stone, no less than 200 years had passed. But what is left today of that tower? Over the centuries, innumerable maintenance, restoration and replacement works have been carried out. For instance, of the 207 original capitals, as many as 195 have been substituted. 
Building works of varying degrees of magnitude were undertaken in order to proceed to ordinary and special maintenance of the tower. An example is the replacement of columns, corbels and small arches that had been struck by lightning. But none of these works were able to solve the fundamental problem, which grew worse and worse as time went by. This takes us up to the year 1838, when, in order to bring back to light the first order of the monument, the decision was made to extend the basin by attempting to waterproof it with a lining of marble. But water continued to rise up to the surface and instead of improving the situation, the work caused a more pronounced lean and the tower sank even further into the ground. Since then, all possible solutions have been investigated in order to address the many problems connected with the structure of the building, the ground on which it rests, and its reaction to external agents. The commissions entrusted with devising a means to ensure the stability of the tower have succeeded one another more or less without interruption since 1907, trying to find the best proposal for building works that would achieve its definitive consolidation. But none of the hypotheses put forward seem to be able to deal with the problem of straightening the tower without damaging it. By 1990, the situation had become so worrying that a temporary closure of the tower was decided, so that extremely substantial work could be undertaken in order to prevent its probable collapse. Without touching the tower, and thus without damaging it in any way.